for uh, joining our transportation um, improvement program open house. Um, I'm going to go over some key items before we get started. This is a recorded meeting. Um, our cameras and chats will not be recorded, but the presentations and the audio will be recorded. Um, we will post the recorded presentation on our transportation um, improvement website in the next couple of days. We have our RTC group or regional transportation council with us in the city of Vancouver. Each um, group will give a presentation and then we'll follow, do a question and answer session afterwards once the presentations have been concluded. And then everyone will be muted as you've noticed uh, for the entire presentation. During our question and answer session, you can um, use your virtual hand to raise your hand and then a host will unmute you in order for you to ask um, audible or audio questions. Um, we do have a chat feature which is enabled. So um, if you think of a question during the presentation, you can go ahead and type it up and send it through. We will try to answer it um, on the chat and if we're not able to get to it there. We'll go ahead and read it out loud um, at the question and answer session. Um, I don't anticipate it to go very long, um, but we will stick to our time frame so it'll end at 630. Um, our email addresses or the email addresses are on the screen. They'll also be on the screen after the presentations. Um, and if you've registered, we will be sending you a form through email to answer and complete, which is completely voluntary. We'd appreciate if you return them back to us though. Um, so we can go ahead and get started with um, Dale. Great, thank you. I'd like to welcome those participating that the virtual transportation improvement program today. This is a combined open house with participation from Southwest Washington Regional Transportation Council, better known as RTC, Clark County and the city of Vancouver. As was mentioned, after we conclude our presentations, we invite you to ask us questions. Each agency will pre prepares their own transportation improvement program in slightly different ways, but overall they each represent the same thing. A transportation improvement program is comprised of transportation projects that will be implemented over the next several years. It documents the scope, funding, and schedule of a project. I will now get started with my presentation. Again, my name is Dale Robbins. I'm with RTC. Next slide. RTC's program covers a four year period, years 2022 through year 2025. It is a combination of all federally funded and regionally significant projects within Clark County, Washington. No matter the jurisdiction, if the project is federally funded or regionally significant, it goes into the RTC Transportation Improvement Program. Projects must be consistent with our long range transportation plan. And the program is physically constrained, which means that we cannot program above the anticipated funding levels. As stated previously, it describes the scope, funding, and schedule of each project. Next slide. RTC's TIP includes major projects from Washington State Department of Transportation, WashDOT, Clark County cities within Clark County, CTRAN, ports, and RTC. In order for any agency to implement a federally funded highway or federally funded transit project, that project must be listed in RTC's TIP. So we overlap with the local TIPs in, in many ways. We would have projects in our TIP that would also be listed in Clark County's TIP, but not all projects. Next slide. It includes a wide range of project types, um, everything from road to transit to bike pedestrians. And next slide. The RTC board is scheduled to adopt the transportation improvement at their October meeting. With that adoption comes a commitment to the first two years of program project. This means that any project listed in the first two years of the TIP can proceed next year if they're ready. Often there's change in um, project delivery schedules and so this provides some flexibility to those projects. Over the four year program, there's $424 million program for transportation improvements, 200 million of that's federally funded. And a portion of those federal funds are allocated to RTC and the RTC Board of Directors awards transportation grants to local agencies. 
That's about $42 million. RTC also certifies that they're following the federal outline process. Next slide. This slide shows the funding distribution between the various projects. There's a total of 83 projects listed in RTC's TIP. We don't have time to go through each of those projects individually. Instead, this slide shows you kind of a breakdown of the various funding by project type. The highest allocation of dollars is really going towards road improvements, transit, and bridges. I'll turn the time over to Clark County now. Good evening. Um, this is Susan Wilson here with um, Chris Carl. He is our capital programs engineer, and then John McSherry, who is our capital program specialist senior position. Uh, we all work on the six year transportation improvement program, and um, we work with grant compliance. Um, Cindy, would you mind pulling up the presentation, please? Next slide. So tonight we're just going to go over a few things. We're going to go over some guiding principles set by our county council, some legalities of our transportation improvement program. Um, we're going to talk about how a project gets on our six year program from our 20 year capital facilities program. We also have an evaluation system and then we'll talk about um, where some of our projects are at um, within unincorporated Clark County, and then some construction schedules, and then um, the steps we go through. Next slide, please. So the guiding principles that our county council has set for us is we pay our debt service first. Um, so we do have some debt service with some public works trust fund loans for projects such as Salmon Creek Interchange. Um, we are paying the debt service and then the next step is to address safety and our and preserve our, our existing assets. So, um, we need to preserve what we have of our assets, such as sidewalks, bridges, um, safety features throughout Clark County. And then 3rd, we move to our large capital reconstruction projects. So projects like 119th street corridor 179. Street 152nd, um, for example, there, there are legal uh, requirements for the six year transportation improvement program. This is a state mandated program um, set by revised codes of Washington and the Washington advisory codes. So in order to work on capital projects, they must be in our annual construction program and our transportation improvement program. Our annual construction program is the first year of the transportation improvement program. We also have an evaluation system. We, um, the county engineer is to prioritize all of our projects and we assist the county engineer to do that. Um, in addition, the county council must adopt the six year program before the budget's adopted. That is a state requirement. Um, and then our all of our TIP, um, it follows all the adopted policies. The adopted policies that Dale was talking about, the regional transportation plan, all of our projects are in that program. Also the comprehensive plan that the council adopts and then the capital facilities plan. Next slide, please. So how does a project get onto the transportation improvement program? It really starts with uh, the comprehensive plan. Um, so once the council adopts the comprehensive plan, um, they create a capital facilities plan, a 20 year plan. And in addition, our transportation improvement program does follow the arterial atlas and all the sub area circulation plans and then we take the 20 year capital facility um, plan projects. We evaluate those. We create a six year transportation improvement program. And then we create an annual construction program, which is the first year of the transportation improvement program. And then once 
we get funding, they um, we include capital project numbers, and that is set by the County Road Administration Board. And that's what really starts the project to begin um, some design work. Next slide. Oh, I think you might have skipped one. Oh. So I'm going to turn it over to Chris Carr to talk about the evaluation system. Um, he knows all the details about this. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Susan. Hello, all. My name is Chris, last name Carl, Capital Program Engineer at Clark County. Um, Susan mentioned the Capital Facilities Plan and how we get our larger TIP products, Transportation Improvement Program products, uh, projects onto our TIP. Uh, we used an evaluation system criteria to prioritize our projects. Uh, they have four major categories, safety, economic development, mobility, and uh, some other aspects as well. Um, mainly safety, we look at prior collisions, unfortunately injuries and fatalities do factor into scoring a project, uh, unfortunately, as well as physical road features. There's some economic development issues, um, scenarios where we get points for that as well as mobility, route connectivity is important. Uh, multimodal, if, if it improves access to either transit, head bike and that sort of thing, trails, schools, that sort of, and that, and that uh, aspect. There are all some other smaller topics that uh, will get us points, environmental impacts, agency support and leveraging if we have funding from other agencies, obviously much easier to get a project going. And that's what this uh, scoring system really tries to capture in uh, making projects more fund, uh, more friendly to funding uh, if they score well in these categories. We have a similar system for, and I'll get into our ongoing programs such as bridges, sidewalks, and that sort of thing, where they have a simplified or catered scoring system to what they represent those types of projects. Next slide, please, Cindy. From our capital facilities plan and our scoring systems, whether it be, and you look at the legend there on the right, whether it be the red lettered projects or the blue numbered projects, those are our larger capital uh, transportation improvement program projects from the capital facilities plan itself. The smaller green uh, projects are our ongoing programs, whether they be bridges, sidewalks, safety projects, and uh, rural projects. So throughout the, uh, the county, these are our current six year, our, our transportation improvement program goes for six years versus uh, RTCs. Previously, they said that theirs is four, ours is uh, six. Next slide. And from here, I'll turn it over to John Cherry. Thanks, Chris. Uh, my name is John McSherry. I'm a senior uh, program specialist at Buck County. Uh, and this slide we're looking at is a representation of the of the schedule of our larger capital improvement projects. Uh, the the projects that are highlighted in gray on the left hand side of the, of the slide are the current projects that are underway, and then uh, yellow shows uh, the projects that are fully funded. Uh, and, and we have commitments, uh, for, uh, grant commitments, um, and they're the projects that are coming up that we'll be working on uh, next year and in, into the near future. And then uh, on the far right, the white projects are our projects that are in the pipeline coming down, coming down the, the, the pipe. Um, again, these are just our, our large capital improvement projects. Uh, at the bottom, we have uh, a breakdown of our ongoing programs, uh, which um, are sort of our everyday uh, projects like uh, road preservation, uh, bridge culvert repairs, uh, sidewalks, and eight, uh, ADA compliance type projects, and, and of course, uh, the, the all-important transportation safety program. Um, they're not scheduled out on a schedule, it would be uh, 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 too much information. Um, ne next slide, Cindy, please. 
Um, so this slide uh, shows you where we're we're at in in the um, process of of passing uh, this the step uh, statutorily. Uh, this um, program has to be approved by uh, the the county council uh, in early December. Um, starting on the left of this schedule uh, shows that we've been working on on this program start, starting in August and September we started uh, to uh, do public hearings uh, with uh, uh, various uh, agencies like uh, the neighborhood associations and uh, well uh, open house like uh, where we're at today which is in green there the September 29th open house um, coming up in October we're going to be talking to the Planning Commission and uh, they uh, they have a hearing on on our our plan, and also we're meeting with um, the development engineering advisory board, and uh, we have um, public hearings with the county council planned in uh, late October and and, and um, November for eventually um, being passed by the county council in in December. Next slide. So, thank you. That concludes our presentation and uh, I'm not sure if we're going to take questions now or wait until after uh, the city of Vancouver to open up to questions. But that concludes our presentation for Clark County. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, we'll move on with the city of Vancouver next, and then we'll open up for questions. Okay, thanks, Cindy. Yeah, my name is Chris Malone. I work for the city of Vancouver. I am the public works finance and asset manager, and I help prepare the transportation improvement program for the city of Vancouver each year. And I appreciate the county inviting us into this forum so that we can kind of share our plans with the rest of everybody that's attending. Uh, just a little clarification. So the county does their transportation improvement program for streets that are outside of the city limits. And then the city of Vancouver creates our transportation improvement program for streets that are within the city limits. So kind of the difference there between the two documents. But in essence, they're they're trying to show the same thing. They're trying to show what capital projects will be doing on our transportation system in the next six years. So that's kind of the end goal here. Next slide, please. So I kind of covered that first bullet item there. Uh, another benefit to creating this document is it helps improve transparency and accountability to the public and to our elected officials. So these documents include information on each project, like financial information that includes uh, scope information and, and schedule information for each of the projects. And at the city of Vancouver, we also include financial data about our entire transportation department, expenses and revenues. We also include information from our public works director that kind of spells out some of the key things accomplished in the previous years, year, and then some goals for the following year. So we try to really uh, expand upon what the law requires for the, the TIP document and just to be more transparent and accountable. Uh, another benefit of the document is it helps planning amongst agencies. So obviously we get to see what the county is planning on doing. The county gets to see what, what we're planning on doing. And then sometimes we're able to work together. For example, our water and sewer system exp expands into the county boundaries. And so oftentimes when we know there's a, a county road project coming, we're able to plan for some water and sewer improvements in coordination with that transportation project. So some benefits there. Uh, I think it was as mentioned earlier, by having a project in the document, it allows both the county and the city to apply for state and federal grant opportunities. Uh, it's, it's required by law as has been mentioned and there's the RCW there. And what, uh, another difference between the city and the county is that the city has a requirement to adopt their TIP by July 1st each year where the county has to adopt by the end of each year. So a little bit different timing on that. And that's why the county is kind of going through this process now in anticipation of their adoption at the end of the year, 
whereas we, the city, have already adopted our tip for this year. But it's still worth sharing, I think, with the citizens to know what we're working on and give uh, information about how, if, if there's people want to provide feedback on projects, how to do that for the upcoming tip amendments. Next slide, please. Uh, the way that the city of Vancouver organizes our tip is we, we split it into different categories. So there's funded projects, which means there's enough funding to complete the entire project through the design, right of way acquisition and construction phase. Then we have a partially funded list, which is typically means that there's money to start the design and the right of way process, but not finish the construction phase. And then we have an unfunded list, which means there's no money has been allocated towards that project. So for the purposes of this presentation, I'll just kind of share the highlights for our funded list and our partially funded list within the city. And our funded list is pretty, pretty short this, this upcoming year. And really the big project we have on the horizon is the first street project, which extends from 164th to 177th Avenue. And you'll see we have future phases of improvements to first street, but they're on the partially funded list. Uh, in the traffic area of things, we have a, a new signal being proposed at Columbia and 13th street downtown. And then we have some multimodal improvements that are being proposed. So we have a update to our transportation system plan at the city, which is kind of our guiding document for how we're going to develop our transportation system over the next 20 years. It's a, it's a really in depth process, a lot of public outreach and uh, takes a long time. So we're in the middle of that probably won't be done with updating the TSP for another year, year and a half. We also have some sidewalk improvements along divine in the vicinity of mill plane and 18th. Some fourth, some pedestrian improvements along fourth plane Boulevard and that exp exp extends from. Basically, I 5 out to Andreessen. And then we have a complete street project to improve Columbia Street through the downtown area to help improve safety for bicyclists and pedestrians in there. So those are some of the multimodal projects that are coming in the near future for the city. Next slide, please. On the partially funded list. So these are again projects that have money for design and right of way acquisition, but not money for the construction phase. So the city is actively pursuing opportunities to get these projects funded through granting and using local funds. Uh, so anyway, we're in the process of applying for grants, et cetera, for these projects. We have improvements to 137th Avenue. This is the, the last segment that needs to be improved along 137th Avenue on the north end from 49th to, 40, to fourth plane. We have improvements along Jefferson Street from Evergreen to Mill Plain. So this will connect this is in the downtown area, connects Mill Plain down to the new waterfront in the downtown area. Then we have 18th Street from 97th to 107th. This is a, a continuation of, a, of a, a much larger project with multiple phases. We've recently improved 18th Street from I-205 to 138th Avenue. So this is kind of the, the west side of I-205. So it's a continuation of that. And then, as I mentioned, uh, there's a partially funded project for first street. This is the eastern half from 177th to 192nd, which is a very high priority project for the city. So we're, we're actively looking for ways to fund that construction phase. On the multi multimodal side of things, we have multiple phases of the Evergreen Highway pathway. So this is along the old Evergreen Highway. As, as as people may know, it's not very user friendly for pedestrians and bicyclists. There's really no shoulder for people to walk on. So the intent here is to install a pathway that people can walk and bike up and down Evergreen Highway. But it's very long, expensive stretch. So we had to split it up into phases and slowly chipping away at those phases. And then 68th Street Sidewalks is a coordination project. We're working with the county up in the northern part of the city uh, and where the, the county has half the street of 68th Street and the, and the city has the other half. And so we're both working on some sidewalk improvements that will meet and provide a complete sidewalk network up along 68th Street. So that's a good benefit to the community. Next slide, please. So that's really the highlights of the city's transportation improvement program. 
if if uh, if folks are interested, you can go to the web page that's on this uh, this slide here, and the entire TIP document is on that web page. If people are interested, and if you if someone is interested in providing feedback on any projects, either ones that are already on the list or maybe a project that should be added to the list, you can go to that same web page, and there's a, a place that you can click on and, and provide feedback on. Uh, existing or future projects. And as I mentioned, the city is uh, required to update our tip by June of every year. So we've already updated this year. The next update will be June of next year. So uh, anyway, uh, that concludes my portion of the presentation. And uh, I think we're ready for questions and answers. Great, thank you so much, Chris. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Megan Reed, and I'm the communications manager for Clark County Public Works. I want to thank you all so much for joining us this evening for our transportation improvement uh, open house. We are going to move into the question and answer session. So on your little controls there, there's a place where you can click a button to virtually raise your hand. If you have a question, go ahead and click that button and Cindy will unmute you. Uh, as a reminder, we do have staff here from the Regional Transportation Council, Clark County, and also from the city of Vancouver. Feel free to ask any questions that you have. Uh, again, as a reminder, much of the staff that we have here this evening is uh, planning or financial in nature. So we may not be able to answer all of your detailed questions about specific projects. Uh, but we will certainly do our best and if not we can direct you uh, to where to get that information so if anybody has any questions now is the time to raise your hand and cindy will facilitate getting those uh, mics unmuted If you can't find your raise hand function and still have a question, you can go ahead and put a comment uh, in the comment section and we can unmute you that way as well. All right, well, it doesn't look like anybody has any questions. Uh, as Cindy stated earlier, this presentation, the audio and the presentation portion have been recorded and it will be posted on our website. Uh, each of the agencies represented here tonight have their own websites for their own transportation improvement uh, plans and projects. So uh, feel free to uh, go to each of those websites and uh, you can also reach out via the emails that uh, Cindy had posted earlier in this meeting. So thank you all again for joining us and we will hopefully we talk to you. Oh, sorry, go ahead. sorry, there was one question from Meg. Last minute before we go. Meg had her hand up, but it, it uh, disappeared. So I'm not oh, sorry. Oh, Brock, Brock says he has a question as well. Oh, oh great. We'll have Meg first and then we'll go move on to Brock. I don't know. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, so I was, um, I don't know if anybody can even answer this question, but I was interested in, um, were you taking, you know, I just noticed the percentage for environmental impact um, was a bit smaller on these projects for the points system, it was pretty quick, but I was kind of scanning over that. And I was wondering um, if we were using that to plan for Clark County, as well as um, the DEI, the um, diversity, equality, and inclusion kind of component in the planning of the transportation. If anybody could speak to that, that would be great. 
I could speak to that if you like. Um, Megan might be able to speak to that also. Um, my, my boss and his teams are working on an equity and inclusion um, criterion. And as soon as that's vetted, um, we do plan to incorporate that um, criteria and some of those uh, methodologies into our transportation improvement program evaluation. Um, it's still in progress. And I know that there's been other agencies who have been looking at this and we also want to have consistency throughout our region. So, um, we have looked at it. It's just in progress and it has not been um, vetted yet. Thank and you. Meg, I would also like to add that the environmental scoring, and I could bring that back up if you'd like a visual, is uh, is not a justification of a project on an environmental standpoint. It's uh, more more the opposite of that. The more environmentally involved a project is, the less points it receives as far as a scoring is concerned. Uh, a lot less approachable or more approachable from a funding standpoint if there's a lot less environmental impact, and I'm not sure of all the specifics that go into that, but that's what the uh, environmental scoring section was there that, that we were referencing. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello, uh, my name's Brock, and uh, this is the first time I've ever been involved in anything uh, community wise like this. Uh, thank you for putting this on. Uh, I was unfortunately uh, couldn't figure out audio until the very end, but I'm glad I'm here now. Uh, my question is the, uh, the new road that's looking at going from uh, Northeast 99th over uh, to the other side of the old uh, landfill. Uh, I know that uh, that's been in the works for a while and the date seemed to have been pushed a few times. Uh, is there a potential completion date uh, targeted right now for that? John, you want me to take that one or you want to take that one? I guess I'll take it. Oh, go ahead, um, Susan. Yeah, so that's our, um, so North, Northeast 99th Street from 94th to um, the the SR um, 5, 503, 117th, uh -huh. 117th. That's our first county roundabout. And that will take about two and a half years of construction. We, uh, I believe we are under bid advertisement currently um, for three weeks and we should be executing contracts um, hopefully by the end of the year. Um, right. And then we'll start turning dirt um, March, April. We'll start probably with some mobilization work and then uh, begin constructing um, some of those roundabouts and um, a lot of utility work going on over there. But yeah, about two and a half years um, of construction for that project. Great, great. I look forward to uh, the completion of that. That'll be really nice to having access uh... Uh, via that direction instead of having to go around right now, like, like I have to. Absolutely. You know, there is just a lot of uh, houses out there and it would be nice to have another way out. So, Correct. And then plus you have a lot of traffic on 119th and Patton Parkway. So it gives a lot of choices in that aspect yeah. too. Yes. Yes. And, uh, one other question, uh, I see, uh, a lot of traffic backing up some some traffic uh, has changed within the last couple of years and there's certain traffic lights that I see around here locally that really get backed up at times. Uh, and I, and, you know, personally, I think that a lot could be alleviated by just uh, the traffic light working a little differently in timing. Who do I reach out to say, hey, county, city, state, you know, I don't know. Uh, can we take a look at this and change and potentially change the light? It really depends upon which area you're talking about. Okay. Um, if it's county or if it's this different various cities or if it's um, the Washington State Department of Transportation. Okay. So, you know, if you want to email me with those questions, I can um, 
guide you on on who to talk to. Okay. Okay, great. Depending upon the location. Sure, sure. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Really quick, I just wanted to add, Brock, since you were asking questions about the uh, Northeast 99th Street project. Sure. Uh, if, I'm not sure how close you live to that and if you received a mailer, but uh, Clark Regional Wastewater District is starting their own project there uh, very quickly. I believe the first day is October 1st. And that is going to be a closure of 99th Street between 105th Avenue and 108th Avenue. Um, and so, and that one is going to last for a, quite a few months, uh, I think three or four months. And local access will be maintained for uh, residents living in the area, but uh, others will have to take kind of a, a different detour route so just wanted to it's not a county project like i said it's it's clark regional wastewater district but just wanted to make you aware of that if you weren't already yeah i got the flyer in the mail and i'm just outside of where that will directly impact me but you know i got my eye on it and i was kind of wondering maybe that was like a pre utility work to the work that's going to be going on you know maybe maybe not but uh i see things are getting started yes that's that's exactly what the project is you're absolutely correct so glad glad you're aware of that <laughs> yeah thank you thank you very much i also wanted to add that we will be um presenting or having our own open house and it'll be um project specific or 99th street um I anticipate it being uh, beginning of January. We haven't um, confirmed the date yet, but we will schedule an open house um, similar to this, but it'll be project specific to that project. Oh, I definitely look forward to that. Great, thank you, Brock. And thank you, Brock, like yes, thank you. It looks like we had a, another question come in through Q&A from Matthew. And Matthew would like to know who is the best person to speak about which construction materials and products would be approved for right-of-way projects in Clark County. Can you repeat the question, Cindy? Are they looking for materials that are used in our projects? Uh, it says, who is the best person to speak about which construction materials and products would be approved for right-of-way projects in Clark County? And I'm not necessarily sure how to answer that one myself. So maybe if we could unmute Matthew, um, we can, maybe get a little bit of clarification about what what he's looking for. You know, I could talk on the basis of how our our projects are built. I mean, we have a material list and, and specs that we follow uh, by default uh, through the WashDOT uh, specs. So if it's any roadway materials in that sense, all that is, is uh, pretty much determined on, on, in that sense. Uh, projects that involve bridges or any specialty materials obviously will be designed to follow their own design specs in, in that sense. So if there's any other uh, clarification that you need, uh, Matthew, um, Matthew, is it, uh, if you could please ask yeah. another question. So, thank you for your presentation tonight. I do appreciate it. You, you guys all have some wonderful projects that are on the way. Um, I uh, have been, over the last, um, I guess for probably the last year and a half, we uh, have been trying to get a, an approval for a stormwater treatment device uh, that my company makes uh, approved. We've gone through the Washington Department of Ecology uh, and have that approval in place. And we've been working with the, the Public Works Department at, at Clark County. And um, I don't know that we've been working with the right department uh, heads um, because it hasn't yet been reviewed yet. So I was wondering if there, if there was a uh, person in, in particular that someone could put me in contact with that we, uh, we might be able to direct our efforts towards. 
I could definitely get you in contact with somebody on our side, our clean water department. Is it an LID, a low impact uh, storm system that you're looking that you're looking at, like a vault? Uh, we we manufacture a, a proprietary BMP for uh, stormwater treatment. Okay. So if you uh, if you have my access, my email on on this uh, documentation, you could email me. I could forward it on to somebody in clean water that might be able to give you some more information. Wonderful. Thank you for your help. You're welcome. No, and I'm Chris Carl, by the way. Thank you, Chris. Okay, well, unless anybody else has more questions, I think that about covers it for the evening. Again, thank you all so much for taking the time to join us. This information will be posted on our website, including the email addresses for all of our presenters this evening, so you can follow up with any questions that way. Thank you all again for attending, and we hope to see you at future open houses. Thank you. Good night, all. Thank you. Bye-bye.